is Nightwood Farm, Nightwood Horticulture, but we're Nightwood Har Farms. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Adrian, I see you next. You want to go? Yeah, good morning. Um, my name is Adrian, and I uh, own Blue and Yellow Farm. Uh, we're located in Medford. We're a tier two, uh, all outdoor, uh, just growing in, in the native soil, trying to improve it, you know, every year to make it a little bit better. And um, yeah, this is my fourth harvest. Uh, and I'm currently sitting on uh, the chair for the sales committee of the OSOF, SOFF. Awesome. Thank you, Adrian. Um, Patrick, you want to go? Hi, this is Patrick with uh, Roganja and Massive Seeds Tier 2 out in Eagle Point, Oregon. Um, all sun-grown flower. Um, yeah. Currently dealing with a metric input problem with everybody. So fun, <laughs> the fun parts of OLCC. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what about you, Noah? Hi. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, no, I'm co-owner of Benson Arbor. Uh, we operate four tier twos uh, in Jacksonville. Um, we do, uh, you know, sun-grown uh, outdoor greenhouse, light dap, uh, and our main focus uh, is pre-rolls these days. Awesome. Thank you, Noah. Um, Brian, you want to go? Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Green Bandit, co-owner of Green Bandit with my wife. We are a tier two sun-grown uh, producer in Eagle Point. Uh, we do full-term sun-grown. We grow in the ground. Um, our focus is on organics and regenerative. We just recently became Sun and Earth certified. That's pretty exciting for us. And so something that I like to bring to the crew is that um, I'm always here to help people if folks want to get on the fully organic pathway certified that I'm just happy to help um, put the playbook to people and make sure that they can achieve that. But uh, yeah, just growing good organic chronic, that's the game. Awesome, thank you so much, Brian. Mark. Hey guys, uh, I'm one of the co-owners. There's there's three of us that are running this place. Uh, we run Alta Gardens, been here since 2019. Uh, we do BHO and sun-grown outdoor and greenhouses when they work. Uh, yeah, if you guys need anything, we got a big team and we can help you guys out with anything. Just uh, here for community. Oh yeah, and I'm the marketing chair. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, Aaron Getty. Hi, everybody. My name is Aaron Getty. I have two tier twos at the confluence of the Applegate and the Rogue Rivers. We have several brands, MD Remedies and Black Bottle that we sell our product through. I'm vice president of the cooperative. Um, we plant in native soil, sun grown. We don't sp spray any horticultural oils. Um, definitely open to growing different strains. If anybody has some certain strains they want to shout my way or propagation agreements, I'm open. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aaron. Ria, are you there? Do you wanna go? Good morning. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Ria from Millerville Farms here. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see your faces. I'll hop on in a second. Awesome, thank you, Ria. Um, I guess I'll go. I'm Christine Miller. I am the owner of Southern Oregon Moonshine. I am a tier two full sun outdoor. I've been OLCC licensed since June of 2016. I'm a multi-generational cannabis farmer here in the Illinois Valley um, with a focus on sustainability and producing clean plant medicine. And um, my partner that I grow on his land, he is Devin of Circle D Farms. He couldn't make it because he is working. And um, yeah, thanks. Um, I think that now we're gonna go to returning farm members like that, anybody who's come before, oh, Justin, sorry. Uh, uh, let, I'll, I'll go and then also Andrew, because we're, yeah. Yes, 
Yeah. Okay. Justin Botier, um, Calix CPA, based in Southern Oregon. Um, we do uh, work. We've worked in the cannabis industry since before REC in Oregon. Um, 80% of our business is in the cannabis industry. We do a lot of 280E mitigation, um, but general business consulting, tax preparation, accounting. Um, we just make sure that your uh, entity for, and tax formula is optimal. That's me. Oh, and I'm treasurer of the board. Hey. I'm Andrew DeWeese. I'm a partner at Greenlight Law Group. Um, I do business law, um, fight the OLC, get into trouble. And he is, um, what would you say, our in-house, our in-house uh, legal team? I guess I'm adv a legal advisor to the board. There we go. Thank you. Um, I see Ryan, who's a returning farm that's not a member, but he's been here. Do you want to introduce yourself, Ryan? I'm Ryan, I own Rogue Farmer, have two tier twos, and consult and kind of operate for three others, um, growing wheat for about 30 years now. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. And um, Farmer Tom, do you want to say hi? Sure. How's it going, everybody? Uh... Farmer Tom here, been in the space for 25 years. Uh, I've got a brand that's doing pretty well, and I run a podcast called Heroes of the Green. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'm going to go with a new farm that's here today. Um, I'm looking for him. Cody from Savage Skunk. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi. Can everyone hear me? I'm Cody. I'm a owner at Savage Skunk Farms. <clears throat> We're a farm in Grand Pass. Uh, I've been going, growing on this same property for 15 years, and we've been a uh, wreck since uh, 2018. And currently right now, our biggest issue is we're dealing with symphylins in the ground. And so we're actually in the process of moving out of the soil into bags, which I desperately don't want to do. But um, finding a solution for these symphylins has been next to impossible. Um, and we, we focus on all organic um, inputs. We're not certified or anything at this point in time, but we don't spray any chemical pesticides. We're just, we focus on putting out quality, clean flour, just like we did in the medical days. And right now our pre-roll line is pretty much keeping us alive. <laughs> so that's about it. And we do full term outdoor and uh, light depth. Awesome. Hey, Christine, Christine, we also have Bodhi. We didn't, I don't know if Bodhi introduced himself the first time, but he is a applicant for farm membership that we are currently going to, we're going to get, get getting ready to vote for his membership here pretty soon. Hi, everyone. Bodhi Durant, uh, one of the owners of Kirby Kush Farms located in the Illinois Valley. Uh, we've been in business since uh, 2016, uh, full-term sun grown. Um, looking forward to getting to know you guys a little better and uh, get this industry uh, headed the right direction. Thank you, Bodhi. Currently we have 11 farm members and um, we're gonna take up to 30. So that's pretty cool. So um, if anybody's interested in applying for farm membership, we can put the link in the chat and um, schedule a little farm interview. Um, the next person I see on my list is Marley from Bonafide. Do you want to introduce yourself, Marley? Yeah, uh, co-owner of Bonafide Cannabis and Fujimel Solventless. We're at Tier 2 in uh, Eagle Point. We do all sun-grown, a little bit of light depth all in native soil. Um, yeah, I'm second generation grower. So we've been pretty much doing it since the inception of, of the medical. And we want to keep doing it. We love it. And uh, interested, to, uh, I guess, hear what you guys got going on. I caught a meeting like three weeks ago, I think. And I watched a couple of the, uh, the videos on YouTube. So that was cool. So yeah, I'm going to try to try to make it uh, my mission to catch everyone on Thursday. But yeah, sorry, I missed the last ones. 
Thank you so much. Um, and we'd love if you're interested for you to apply for farm membership because we need more people. Yeah, yeah, I guess we can talk about it later, but whatever that entails, I'm not really sure. It's a super simple interview process and um, takes about maybe 20 minutes. We just did one with Bodhi this morning. So um, I can put my phone number in the chat and you can just reach out to me and we can I can help walk you through it. Right on, sounds cool. We have an application. Um, I will, it's online and then I'll put it in the chat so you can click on it and then just answer the questions. It's not too complicated. Yep. But that's kind of the first step I would say. Mm -hmm. Right on, yeah, sounds cool. Thank you, um, Sarah Sandoval. Yeah, and for, for let me interrupt real quick. Um, for uh, returning visitors and members, we, we try to keep it down to 30 seconds, but for new visitors, feel free to take a few minutes. You're on mute, Sarah. Sorry about that. Um, I was invited by Erin, and um, I am with Trek Transport and Logistics. We are based out of Salem. I have been in the cannabis industry for about 10 years. Um, I'm based out of Southern Oregon. Uh, Trek basically has um, a wholesale license and a facility up in Salem. They are a transport company, been in the market for about three years. They deliver to all retail outlets in the state. Um, we will deliver flour for $20 a pound. So if you put product at our warehouse, we can deliver anywhere in the state for $20 a pound. We do packaged goods for 6% of the invoice total. Um, and that includes uh, pickup from your facility, storage, um, packing, tagging, um, delivery, any terms, um, terms monitoring, payment pickup, cash drop, drop off back to you. We'll pick up the net payment and we actually do free sample deliveries to anywhere in the state. So we have some really great services. We actually are, are also um, rolling out a vendor managed inventory program. This is mostly for packaged goods, but um, flour is coming down the line. It's basically an auto restocking for the dispensaries. We built a proprietary API key that plugs into the metric of the retail store and it can tell us inventory levels of any product that comes from our license number to their license number. And we can watch that inventory in real time. And then we'll set an interval with the store of whenever they want um, reaching deliveries. And we will um, just make sure they're stocked up to their par levels at each delivery. So we're um, feeling it's gonna kind of optimize the industry. It's gonna take pressure off sales reps. It's going to take pressure off production because we're, we're gonna be able to do a lot more forecasting. Um, just a lot of really great benefits. Um, the background for us is AI and, um, you know, a lot of tech solutions. We would love to offer our services to any farms or um, produce uh, processors, um, any brands that um, are needing anything that we have. We also have an agency that we um, that we contract with that do, does sales. So we could offer that component um, if that was a need. Awesome, Aaron, you had a question for Sarah? Yeah, I have a question, Sarah. Would you mind looking <laughs> over how we might, might be able to piggyback off of your service in implementing independent sales reps to be able to pick up flour from your storage facility? Yeah, we do do that. Um, we just charge, um, it depends if you're actually delivering with us, um, then we just charge like a um, $20 manifest um, for your, and then I think it's like a $40 circular. If you want a circular, we'll do a $40 circular and a $20, $20 manifest. But if uh, that's if you're not delivering with, actually, yeah, there's a storage fee if you're not delivering with us. And then we just charge for the uh, manifest. But if you are delivering some product with us, it's just the um, manifest fees. So you could use it as a standalone facility and just pull product out of there to deliver yourselves and not use any of our transport services. But if you do use some of our transport services, then um, we'll just charge it for the for the um, manifests. So there is a small storage charge. Sorry, I, I um, 
getting a little jumbled up, but yeah, there's a small storage fee if you're not using any of our transport services. If we're using your transport services, but want to send an independent sales rep to come pick up some product, does yep, that wait? Just the, the manifest fee? fee. Yep. No, 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 no storage fee. If you are using our, our um, transport services, no storage fee, just the manifest. We just charge for that. It's a great deal. That sounds great. Yeah, we're, we're, happy to, we're happy to offer um, services to the small mom and pops. You know, that's kind of what we're all about. We want to be able to give advantages to the smaller businesses that these larger larger um, chains and, um, you know, mega brands are, are, have available to them. We, we want to give the same, the same advantages to, to the small guys. Sweet. Sounds Thank amazing. You so much. Um, where's your facility located? You said you're in Southern Oregon, but your facility's in Oregon? Salem. 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 Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great location. That sounds amazing. Maybe you can put your phone number in the chat and people can reach out to you if they feel like that's a good fit. Absolutely. And I could say that. If, Sarah, if, um, if someone's utilizing your uh, storage and fulfillment, uh, do, does the customer do we pay 20 bucks per pound upon intake to your facility? Nope, upon delivery. We'll upon invoice you after we make that delivery. Nice, okay. We should probably move it on to the other guests to give everybody time to introduce themselves and then we could come back towards the end of the meeting with additional questions. Um, I see Javid next. Hey everybody, um, I'm Javid, founder and CEO of Aperon. Aperon is focusing on building trading infrastructure for bulk cannabis in scale. So two of our, our subsidiary businesses, um, one is Big Tree Grading, third party grading, qualitative um, appraisals, and uh, we create certificates of grade, much like a certificate of analysis, but it's all that third party qualitative data uh, from the grading visit. And then Tamerlin is a online B2B uh, marketplace. So buyers and sellers can source products that have been graded on there. We see them selling uh, faster for more money, you know, easier turns. Our Services basically infuse um, trust and transparency into the transaction before weeds moved or money's changed hands. And thanks for having me here. It was great meeting a lot of you last week. Yeah, you brought a lot to that meeting. Um, thank you so much. Let's see, Andrea, I see next. Um, hello, my name is Andrea. Hello. We can hear you. Hello, Andrea. Um, I just wanted to make sure I took my meat off. Um, I uh, previously worked for Wholesale um, Arena for about four years and about seven months ago. And I'm working um, very closely with a handful of brands. Um, I've been working doing some of their distro for them in the Southern Coast. Um, I also work with Epic selling indoor flower and joint packs, and I also work with Better Edibles company out of Independence. So I'm pretty much just an independent rep. Um, I do have a few farms and skunk train farms out of Southern Oregon, um, just pick up circulars and pretty much run and just kind of um, do whatever I can to connect places. Um, I have about 100 that I service and I've been working with those shops for about four years. So I would, we met and kind of went through um, an introduction with Green Sea. Um, um, so I'm just here to see if there's anything that I can offer or any data or for me to everybody. And that's all I have, I think. Awesome, Andrea, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? for Andrea before we move on. Um, oh, say, so, uh, Adam Martin from DeKind 420. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, I got the invite from Justin. Thank you for that, Justin. Um, I'm the general manager here at DeKind 420. 
Um, we've been in business uh, eight years now. We do 100% water soluble powdered nutrients, and we also do soilless grow mediums. Um, we're based out of Sun River, Oregon, and uh, well, obviously Oregon, but uh, we also do our cocoa out of Eugene. So um, just here, happy to be here. Look forward to you know talking with anybody, helping anyone any way we can. Um, you know, we've helped a lot of operations increase yields and numbers. And uh, really the big thing for us is saving people time and hassle, a uh, very clean line. Um, when we say water soluble, it definitely doesn't, doesn't uh, there's no gunk, no buildup, nothing like that. So I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, we're always available to help. And we love working with uh, local farms here in Oregon. So Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Um, anybody who wants to share their contact information, if you put it in the chat, then people could reach out to you directly. Um, Steve Brussel. Steve, can you hear me? Do, would you like a chance to? Sorry about that, guys. I uh, was having some technical issues there. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me back on. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, see these lovely faces. Aaron, I appreciate you. Thank you for always uh, getting me out here. Uh, again, so Steve with Vist Oregon, uh, we do an amazing technology that provides that zero oxygen packaging environment. You can kind of see some of my cool equipment behind me here. Um, really talks about preserving your terpenes and your cannabinoids. So, uh, you know, if that's what you're interested in and really highlighting your flower, uh, you know, two, three, six months down the road, getting maximum dollar for that flower at that same time, uh, our service is the one to put it into. So uh, let's chat. Um, also want to put it out there for you all um, because I know that it's coming down the pipeline. Uh, Aspergillus. So we are developing uh, a, a airborne aspergillus screening uh, that we will be providing anyone on this call and any of the SOFF members a free one-time airborne aspergillus screening. This is not going to the state or anything. This is just internal. So you can get an idea of how your facility kind of lines up with the coming laws coming in March. So. Uh, let me know if I could be of service in that, if you guys want to see how your facility is testing out as the airborne goes, and uh, let's see if we can help you out on that front. Aaron, you have a question for Steve? Yeah, I just wanted to ask Steve how he just, um, differentiates, differentiates his service from nitrogen sealing, and also if you wouldn't mind talking about your cryo packaging, cryo pasteurization, the microbial element to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the old school issue with nitrogen packaging, um, uh, back in the day, there was a lot of issues that would pop up from around that. And that primarily stemmed from using an impure nitrogen. Our system actually, when the gas comes in right about here, it actually gets triple filtered before it goes into the bag. Um, and so we're using a very pure gas. We actually have done some recent R&D and we switched our gas uh, blend to a argon CO2 that we have worked on R&D customizing that blend. And we actually found that the argon is uh, a better preserving gas on certain very volatile terpenes. And so again, you know, trying to keep your guys' flower in the absolute most pristine condition possible, we're all gonna constantly be kind of innovating this process. Um, and then on the flip side of your, your question, Aaron, um, the cryopasteurization technology, um, that's, you know, if you've got microbials, mold, bacteria, fungus, E. coli, salmonella, any of those things that's creating a microbial load on the flower, um, that service and that technology could gently clean all of that from the flower uh, in the most natural organic manner using no gas, or uh, you know, no ozone, no purify, uh, peroxide, none of those oxidizers, but it's able to get all those microbials out of it. We also have uh, Jason's on the call uh, on the Zoom meeting now too. I was um, going to ask too, Steve, is what size batches and what does it cost? If because I want to case 
hopefully Jason will be able to answer some of these microbial testing and maybe yeah. some screening, but what size batches and how does that work? No, that's great. I'm glad to see Jason on here. Jason was actually just here in my facility and we were chatting and hanging out for a few minutes. So that's, that's great. Um, so uh, our cost right now um, is to this group, you know, we kind of had some different pricing. You got to have minimums and whatnot before you do it. We wanted to really streamline something for you guys. And this is something that I've kind of talked with Aaron about. Um, we're just going to do the flat rate for the packaging for this group at $25 per pound. Um, that puts it into that zero oxygen suspended animation system. Um, typically, the MSRP on that when we rolled the service out was going to be $40 a pound. Then depending on volume, we could kind of work it down to a certain level. But I wanted just to, you know, do a nice flat rate for the, everybody in this group and have something very exclusive to the SOFF group. So we're just going to do the $25 per pound on that. Um, and we can do that anywhere between half pound increments. Uh, all the way up to my bulk bags, they can hold anywhere between five and seven pounds, depending on bud density. That's awesome. Um, Jason, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Can you guys hear me? I'm actually driving in my car. So. We can. Okay, great. Um, yeah, my name's Jason. I'm uh, with KHL Labs. I'm the senior executive sales. So essentially, if you're in Oregon and you need testing through KHL, I'm your guy. Um, I was just over at Steve's doing some sampling for some of Aaron's product, really nice looking stuff. Um, basically I like to think myself as a liaison between the growers and, uh, the lab. I've been a grower for 20 years, so I definitely understand your side. I've been with the lab for seven months, so I'm really learning their side. Um, so as far as for being able to explain to you what happens in a lab, I feel like I'm kind of uniquely, uh, set for that having a background in growing um you know if you guys ever have any questions about the lab or what we do or you want to come visit it I'm more than happy to facilitate that uh i'd love to show people the lab and how the machines work and how we come up with their numbers so that it's not such a mystery for them anymore um i know as a grower it always just kind of seemed like magic that you just give them this you know, product and somehow they come up with your numbers, but it really is like finely detailed. It's really neat to watch. So if anybody's ever interested, let me know. We can bring some of your stuff in and run the testing right in front of you. Yeah, you know, it's really, we're all about being an open book and transparency, which I think is kind of been lacking in the lab sector, which is kind of what's led to a lot of the like, uh, just misunderstanding about what's going on with it. And I think the more that you know about the lab that you test with, the like, the more safe you'll feel in your results. So that's what we're here for. I love it, Jason, thank you. Um, I have some questions that I'm sure other farms do about the upcoming microbial um, testing. And after mm -hmm. talking about like the cleaning it. Um, so have you tested anything for microbes yet and did it fail? Um, we do do microbial testing. Uh, a lot of it has been on older product uh, like hemp. And it, I really like, in my experience, I've found that it has more to do with storage and things like that. You could have a small amount of, you know, a microbial. Mostly it's in like indoor facilities and not as much outside. You know, when you're outside, you've got so many other little beasties out there that can kill those things. Where when you're in an indoor environment, you've kind of sterilized a lot of that. And so when you bring something outside into it, it's essentially a Petri dish where it can just like grow and grow and grow and be like, it doesn't have competition to do that. I mean, again, this is like from a grower standpoint, you know, when you put you know, beneficial microbes in your soil and your plants, they help kill off the bad ones, you know, and when you're running a facility that doesn't have any of those good microbes running around to do the job for you, then you're kind of inviting that. So KJA has extensive experience uh, testing for all the microbials in indoor uh, facilities because of being based out of Florida. The majority of the growers there are indoor, and so it's something we've handled quite a bit on a national level. 
Um, are you guys doing R and D? So let's say people from this co-op, they have all their fresh product. This is reminds me a lot of 2016 when we're like, nobody's ever tested for pesticides. We're like, is the orchard across the river going to affect my test results? Like what are you guys doing independent R and D and what does that cost for microbial? Just so people can have an idea of where they stand. And also what specific microbes are you guys testing for? And is it a pass fail situation or is it a like concentration? So it is a concentration um, level. Like you can, you can still pass and have a small amount. Uh, I wish I had my paperwork in front of you in front of me, but I'm driving right now. So I don't really have like the list of exactly what we test for. I do know that, um, that, it's it's like a list of four or five different microbials that we're testing for that are essentially once you reach a certain load then it's a fail um we are happy to do r d for you guys on any of your stuff just so that you can get an idea if it's something that you're dealing with in your facility um you guys can either like anytime that i'm off to sample if you guys want to send r d's for me um, I was just telling Aaron this the other day, we'll R&D moisture for you for free. Um, I'll R&D your uh, microbials. At this point, I'll figure out a discount for you guys. I wanna like make sure that you guys are set for when that comes into play so that we don't get any more fails than we absolutely have to. Uh, also, it's another thing, uh, if you do, if we do analysis on your sample and it looks like you may fail, we will run it again so that we can actually make sure that the whole sample would fail and that we're not just failing you, you know, on one part of it and, you know, ruining the whole batch. So uh, that's something that Kaja takes really seriously. If it looks like there's going to be a fail, we retest automatically. Uh, the last thing we want to see is somebody lose product that's actually viable because something on our end. I know that I would appreciate that. Like I always appreciate the carefulness with just not just reporting and just pushing everybody through for even just <clears throat> THC content and stuff like that. So that's really nice. I'm just trying to like wrap my mind around. I don't think that most any of us are going to fail for these microbial contents. Isn't it like mostly like E. coli, salmonella, those big nasty ones. But I'm trying to think if we do R&D and somebody does fail, it might be in their best interest to pay Steve the $25 to clean it up before they actually get testing done. Exactly. And yep, just exactly. A little bit forward ahead of it because we just want to be as successful together as we can. So just like a small R&D test saying, whoops, okay, I'm going to use Steve's tech to get it clean and then test it for reals. So um, does anybody else have any questions before I ask Jeremy to introduce himself? Nope. Jeremy, do you want to say hi? Good morning, everybody. Jeremy with Agricola Collective. Uh, sorry, I had to jump on a little late. Uh, my sales meeting just before this one and today went a little long. Um, as some of you know me and some of you don't, we do distribution throughout the state. Um, I am currently not taking on any other clients at this time, but looking to grow this uh, efficiently. Uh, we just took on or agreed with Green Bandit, which is on here. Brian's here. Uh, very excited to, to launch that one. My, my thing is I don't want to take on too many and not be able to do a great job for the ones I have. So Circle D, Southern Oregon Moonshine, and now Green Bandit are in our menu. I'm very excited. And uh, I work with Christine quite a bit and just discussing how we can make this better. I, the main reason I am here for you guys is to answer any questions, anything I can help with some of the experiences I've had, uh, some of the stuff that I've learned. If you have any questions, how I can help you get your products out there with or without me. Um, just any questions you have as far as distribution, how I'm doing things, how I've learned not to do things, whatever questions you may have, I'm here to support you guys in your self distribution, or if you create your own uh, co op distribution model, whatever works best for you guys. And if there's anything I can do to help. Thank you, Jeremy. I know we really appreciate all of your insight. Brian, go ahead. Just wanted to say that 
we, I really appreciate your approach, Jeremy. And uh, I think the whole cooperative does. I would say that I think we're all rooting for you to have success because um, your, your mode of delivery and your system is one that I think we would all like to be involved with. So uh, thanks for participating and uh, looking forward to more and more work together. Thank you. And one of the things, I don't, middle of the night when I couldn't sleep, I was thinking of you guys um, and thinking, man, if, if you had somebody from the co-op that was a liaison for everybody, and, and I don't know, this is just peak conversation to think about, talk about, but if there's somebody in the co-op that could collaborate everybody's inventory, get it all on one page, and then work with me and somehow be able to distribute for everybody, I mean, not, not today, but start thinking of a way that we could do this and have maybe a one point of contact for the co-op and, hey, I've got this and this and this, and maybe have your own brand page. Right now we have brand pages for Circle D, Southern Oregon Moonshine, and, and the Green Bandit. But if we just had a brand page for Southern Oregon Family Farms Co-op, that might be something that could work and we just keep that updated with a minimal amount or something. I'm open to any suggestions here. I want to do right by you guys and I want us all to succeed. So yeah, we, we have a um, co-op leaf link but we we need to kind of get a little more organized and just this morning I was making like a spreadsheet I was going to send out just for like like strains and like rough estimates of quantity so we can kind of start getting that together so I think that's a great idea um Aaron you had a question yeah so I had um a, some maybe a, like an idea about what the idea that Jeremy brought up because we have been talking about doing that and how we how, how how we've approached it is um each farm pick a couple kinds to put on this one collaborative menu everything that's put on this collaborative menu must also go through the grading process so that way this menu has a surety to quality and quality standards it's in a standardized packaging with co-branding, of course, with where the product comes from, the farm. And it's a little bit more limited per uh, farm um, sense, but on but with the collective sense, there's a large variety of, of products and strains on this menu. And that menu, we could get to um, both independent sales reps and wholesales around the state. Um, so if you wouldn't mind talking about that, just having that menu available to different wholesales, Jeremy, what's your feeling on that approach? Yeah, I, my opinion is there's, there's room for everybody, uh, competitors or not, just the same as you guys are all getting together. In a sense, you're competing with each other, but at the same time, there's room for everybody, right? I, I feel the same way as far as distribution. There, there's good ones, there's not so good ones. Be careful, use each other's experiences to help guide your way through that. But I'm not one that has to be exclusive. I just wanna make sure that I'm doing a great job for my vendors. So, and in a sense, my, my theory on this is if you have multiple people out there distributing your product, it's getting your brand, your name recognition. They may not buy from everybody that they see carrying your product, they're gonna buy from the ones they like or the ones that are most consistent. But the more people you have out there hitting that timeliness. So a lot of times my reps are, they're supposed to hit every dispensary every two weeks, right? If somebody hits in between those two weeks, they're gonna have an opportunity to sell. When my rep went there, they may have not needed anything, but a week later they do. And they don't always call me, they're getting better about it, but they'll buy from whatever's in front of them. So the more you can have your brand or your products in front of them, the better chances you have. And then they'll pick who they like to buy from. And ideally, if I do things right, they'll prefer Agricola. So, hey, you guys, I have, um, we've got about 13 minutes before the end of the hour. I'll have to split at that time. Um, but there was an agenda item that's been on the agenda for some time. Christine wants to discuss the potential of putting together a volunteer cleanup project for Earth Day. 
I think we I think it would be good to like talk about that, um, especially for purposes of this recording as well. Um, and then, of course, there's no limit to how long this meeting can go. Um, just that um, this recording will end once I leave. So I thought maybe we could talk about that and then we can get back to questions. Thank you, Justin. Um, yeah, I've had the idea for a little bit, like seeing all of the the, we had talked about it earlier, like the fences that are falling down, all the greenhouses and all the plastic. And um, I'm an avid fisher person and um, I go and stand over the green bridge and just check for steelhead whenever I can. And the last year I've seen a lot of water pipe and netting floating down the rivers and plastic and nutrient packaging. And um, also I can physically see large amounts of like plastic right by our riparian areas in the valleys. So um, I was thinking of an excellent way for us to, as a cannabis industry, to kind of give back to our communities with, to probably start on public land, but um, find a grow that's for right now, Earth Day, just get a one and do a volunteer cleanup where we get as many farm members and also community members and any kind of other, anybody who's willing to, um, and start one by one just cleaning up these these grows, preferably on public land because those are the ones that are mute, like affecting everyone. But also, there are a lot of people that were kind of duped or tricked into like leasing their property. Let's say like they're elderly people and they're on a fixed income, and they're like, "Oh, I'll give you twenty thousand dollars to rent your land," and then they just come and trash it and leave all this mess. So also consider like case by case basis private land cleanup and um, Earth Day is um, on the 22nd, I believe, let me look, um, this year, which I know is like 420 weekend, but I feel like for my time, it's also my daughter's birthday weekend and she's willing to sacrifice her birthday weekend to do this cleanup with us. And so maybe instead of doing like a big 420 party or something like that, we could do a 422 um, Earth Day cleanup and not everybody has to, but I would love for as many of us to get together and I will do my effort in trying to get like donated. Like there's a, our local grow shop takes in like plastic for free for recycling. And I'll do like my due diligence on where we can put things and do limited out of cost. But I'm also willing to pay like up to $2,000 in um, like fees for throwing things away. So I would love everybody's opinion. And if anybody wants to, yeah. Um, go ahead, Brian. Uh, yeah, I, I really like that topic. You brought it up the other day at the grading, and I thought that was um, very cool and something that we should all be participating in, not, not just this river cleanup, but um, community engagement is really something that uh, cannabis businesses could do more of, and I think that that will always help to reduce the stigma and make us more welcome in our communities. Um, I also want to just throw out that in this sun and earth um, packet that we went through, community engagement is one of the components. And I thought that was a pretty cool thing that they did. And I also think it's cool that you on your own volition thought to do it like that. So um, again, this is just one of those components that they have in there. Um, but they obviously thought it was necessary for the whole industry to, to do these things and have engagement in the community. So, you know, kudos to you for making that invitation. I'm totally down to be there. If it's 420 and we're doing a cleanup, I might, I might get high. But <laughs> I think we're all going to probably want to be like a little bit motivated. I, I can clean track like nobody's business when I get stoned. Like it's just like that. So anyway. Um, I've already reached out and have people with trailers and equipment, like heavy equipment. And I'll probably be able to get gloves and a bunch of stuff volunteered. I used to run a volunteer tree planting program. So I'm good at getting like Taylor sausage will probably donate hot dogs and we can do like grill. Like, I feel like it would be great for all of us. So Aaron, you had a comment or question? Yes. Thanks. Um, Earth Day is the 22nd of this month or next April. month. Or oh, 22. Cool. Oh, April. Got it. Sorry. I didn't. Um, <laughs> Well, I love the idea of cleaning up rivers um, and at least April is a little bit warmer. Um, I just was having trouble trying to think about what lands, public lands, maybe um, people grew on illegally. Um, but I mean, as it gets warm, especially in the summer, 
I have to be around water. So come the summertime, let's let's definitely do an, another river cleanup if we have to. Or and then a lot of people have boats within the group. So I think that the idea is great. I really support it. Um, so yeah, great thinking. I had a rafting program that I did for noxious weeds on the Illinois River, and we'd all I get the rafts donated, and then we'd all bring like backs and we'd raft down the Ellies from the Green Bridge to Six Mile and pick noxious weeds along the way and pack them out with us. So we could do something like that. Like there's so many like community building, team building activities that we can do that just really give back to our local communities, like make a difference today. And that's what I want to focus on. Um, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I was just going to reiterate what you said. Like it doesn't have to be only a cleanup. We can we can definitely have a party or barbecue or something like that. And um, yeah, and I think the sites are numerous. I mean, you could just talk to the sheriff's department and jump uh, there and I bet they have they know a ton of places that need to be cleaned up. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the Illinois River up there and I hate the idea of it being polluted from the, that crap. Yeah, I would like to focus, I think out here in the Illinois Valley because we are the like the epicenter of cannabis, like where black market, like a lot of it started out here and then that focus on the Applegate, but there's a like a community chat thing. So we could reach out to the local sheriffs and just the local community and get like nominations and also volunteers because I feel like this will be a huge passion project for every, everybody's ready for a change and like cleaning up our community. And this is, um, my school used to do an Earth Day cleanup on dump sites on public lands. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that where people just like dump trash once and then everybody just dumps trash there. And once you see trash, you're not, as careful about keeping it clean. So we would do an Earth Day cleanup where we completely cleaned up a spot that had been a dump site and nobody dumped there again. Like it's amazing once you take it away, people all of a sudden have this respect for it that they didn't have before. So we can do really cool things, so. 